And we are in fog getting here in British Columbia, day four of nonstop fog. And this fog will actually come in your home. <laughs> now, fog is normally a reflection of light on moisture, right? And so I grow up on the East Coast. I'm used to 120 days a year of fog. Check the Guinness Book of World Records. You don't believe me. I grew up in a day when there was no radars, no sounders, and you had to get on the bow with a boat. <laughs> you know, you had to take a, you took a alarm clock and a chart, and you headed out into the ocean, and you took a, for you know whatever your alarm clock said, and then you took another course. I'm just talking while waiting to make sure everything's going to be good here, folks. Looks like a bad quality. Hang on. I grow up on the East Coast. I'm used to a. Well, the audio is okay, so that's all we can do. Mom and Ox left a comment on my other video that I got to remember to say. And this one here is part one of it. And I don't want to th say it now because it's going to give a bit of the game away that I'm up to. So it looks like I'm all synced up. We'll just go ahead because we got a lot to cover. And I got three thumbs down already. Pretty darn good. You know I'm going to be giving them the gears tonight. Oh, this is going to be badass. Now, the big problem was, how is that audio going to come across for you folks? And so after the first clip, we'll find out. And hopefully I got the audio, uh, the audio worked out. Uh, that is not fog. Yeah, it looks like fog. It's not fog that we're getting here. Let me come back and touch on that for everybody. Uh, these particles, there's, I don't know how many thousands per cubic meter there's going to be, but it's like incredible. It doesn't leave moisture on windshields or on the mirrors or on metal like you would expect, you know, from condensation, different temperatures. And quite a few people now have commented how the, how the fog doesn't, well, it looks like fog. It doesn't leave no moisture, but it's all day and all night. And fog is, is um, which is what we're talking about for radiation, is where the, the chemtrail of skies with so many particulates, the radiation can't rise up. It gets captured by the particles because they're electronically charged, the radiation, and that weighs them back down. And so this is a mitigation for every country on the planet. Um, audio's good. That's all that matters. And so let's get busy. Audio's great. Tank Sydney's, Standing Foot, Annabeck, Tracy May, Basic Data, Janet, Pam, Candace, James, Big Mouth TV, Wedge Man. Ha ha! I got quite a few in there that time. Not too shabby. And uh, Lori, hi. Uh, Lori puts up lots of videos, folks. She's out there searching all the time. Uh, J.D. Mason, Annie Beck, McGaltry. Can be fixed by wiping off the lens. <laughs> yeah. Well, that could have happened because I was back and forth to shop. So hang on a second. Let me see. Well, I won't know for a few minutes because my videos are like a minute behind. So the feed that's coming back to me, because I normally don't run another feed there, so I'm going to have to get off it. But if it's if it's if I made it worse, I guess you guys will tell me quick enough. I'm just going to move down, and we just went from 70 to 108. Well, don't blink, Dana. Audio's great. That's all that matters. As long as I don't touch anything else, we'll be okay for the rest of the night. Okay, so the first clip I'm going to play for you. Uh, boom, 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 boom. And this is a video, of course, the title says it all. And just hang on, I'm going to move this over. <laughs> Not very often I do stuff like that. Um, so Ken Busler, and I can't pronounce his name properly, and Jay Cullen, are the real, real scientists, are the like, wacko nuclear madman lobbyists. And they're lobbyists. It's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. There's a link below to the offending video where they basically lie on their back 
with diapers on, with their arms and legs up in the air and screaming, Nuclear is not bad! It's not bad! Stop and asking! It's really pathetic. And, uh, was it Evil Fog? Did it get cleaned off? You have fog again tonight if you open your door, it comes in. Yeah, it's crazy. This is four days of fog. It actually is better. Fixed uh, video with wiper. You got to get a wiper on my video. Dana's fuzzy, was he? Okay, everybody's saying it's a bit better. I screwed up. That's my... That's typical. Okay, let me see what the audio comes across, like, for the first clip. And the first clip is... I can't remember. It'll show up when I start playing it. But the debris associated with the tsunami, the tsunami affected the entire coast of, uh, of Japan. And so a lot of the debris that's, that's washing out and, and arriving here um, is likely hasn't been into contact with radioactive material. Oh! So we'll just check and see if that's too loud. I know what I just done that time was probably too loud. But see if the audio of this was too loud. And why, you certainly heard it for sure. I'll adjust it if, there's a, if it helps everybody. Was what he just said was that the debris that was coming out wasn't contaminated. But I guess he doesn't think about how the plumes went out for hundreds of miles before they even started. You know, how the plumes made it all the way to the west coast of Japan, 1,200 miles away. And the prevailing winds are from the west. And these were hot particles. And so it's easy to assume that that tsunami debris, uh, you know, it wasn't like flying away from Japan. It was taking its time moving with currents. I got 14 years as a commercial diver over 300 days a year. I know a few things too. And so I was e easily able to postulate correctly, of course, because the plumes came out and landed all over that uh, U.S. Ronald Reagan. We'll get to that later. And they went all the way out there and got on that debris. Hot particles. That The tsunami encompassed that entire site. And there's a video down below that I put together for everybody. If everybody's not really familiar with Fukushima. And it's uh, unit uh, reactors 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And also the ocean, and also the aerosol. And I covered all of them in about a 22-minute package as an introduction with the original pictures. And you can download them yourself below the video. And there's um, around 2,136 of those pictures below. You can go download them and look at them yourself and make your own determinations on how much carnage went on at that site. All clear? Okay. So the sounds good all around? Okay, well, I'll keep the volume at that level. Thanks, Mom and Ox. Mom and Ox put a great comment there. I won't forget it. Uh, so let me finish off this clip in that case. Um, I think that there's quite a, a groundswell of, of citizen science where people are, are looking at debris that washes up and, and making measurements and trying to compare those to background. Again, that's problematic because we can't necessarily fingerprint that changes in radioactivity are related specifically to, to radionuclides coming from food. Background. And so, yes, you can. Um, you can take that as what, what it really truly means. See, the debris was coming out, and there was a massive amount of it. And all of it got covered, coated. Because it had to come right out there alongside the pre Fukushima prefecture. All that debris had to come right past Fukushima. All of it went out into the Pacific Briar, which is just off the coastline of Japan, and it whisked everything straight out into a direct line to North America. And so the jet streams are right above that. So the stuff that came out went across, which was an amazing amount, because MOX fuel blew up in a couple of days. That was two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. Those particulates, the uranium-234, 235, the uranium daughters, the plutonium... Um, 239, 240, there was particulates themselves, big particulates of really hot particles would have landed all over that because the entire nuclear waste site itself, of course, was engulfed in the tsunami. So it was, so all the water had to come back through there too. And the pictures that are down below shows you all the damage, not everything, but shows you 2,136 pictures that the Fukushima 50 themselves took. And so let's keep going to the next one. Clear, Tracy. Thank you. So I just wanted to, to go back. Um, but first, Jay, where are you going for credible information? Being, being a scientist, I, I tend to go to the primary literature. Um, I found uh, Ken's website and, and Ken's research group um, as a, a very useful source of, of information. 
um, and uh, I've been sharing that with with members of the public here in Canada as well. So he's using Ken now as his source, right? Okay, let's keep going. And once again, in the last video that I made earlier this evening, uh, we know that Jay, and that was Jay that time. I'll start getting on the ball because I got 20 of these clips. But we know that Jay worked for or yeah, worked for Woods Hole, right? And so he does that repeatedly. But let's go to the next one. Uh, this is an interesting one. Here we go. Here we... Don't worry about it. But there are very few measurements. The half moon base statement, I believe, is a response to the recent. Um, that's that's Ken Buser. The, the viral video that showed the increase in count rate, the radioactivity on the beaches, which, as it turns out. It's from a natural source. Right? You get that one? Now, you got to remember, right, that every time it rains, it washes these isotopes back out to the coastline. Right? Where is it going to go? Right all along your coastline. And so now they're going to try to equate 1,400 uh, counts per minute as just radon, normal background uh, radiation that's indigenous to planet Earth. It's got nothing to do with this equation. It's got zero to do with this equation, and that in the basement of your house, you'd be lucky to get one or two counts a minute of that kind of uh, background radiation. But you know that when you set your Geiger counters to look for that kind of stuff, that you're looking for something that's so innocuous that, excuse me, that it, it and once again, it doesn't belong in the equation. So let's keep going there. A mineral that is high in the natural element thorium that decays and this so why are we talking about natural stuff because he's trying to equate high counts on the coastline because the rain washes it not all of it but washes you know a lot of these isotopes and the radiation and the the mutations the out into the ocean beaches. so they did make a measurement apparently in response to that recent uh finding by a citizen scientist that there was higher levels along the beach you know if they're a little bit more proactive maybe that wouldn't have happened if we already had measurements out there then that wouldn't necessarily happen by individuals with Geiger counters. So, with individuals with Geiger counters, if the government was out there taking numbers and, and uh, posting them, then we wouldn't go out there and look, is what he's suggesting there. And then he's suggesting how ridiculous it is that someone like me or you would go out there with Geiger counters as just laughable. So he's discouraging people into even considering it by going through that routine, right? Uh, let's go to the next one. I'm hoping we're trying to provide that, some of that on our website, this our radioactive ocean. He's, and so that's Ken. He's plugging his website now. The org website that we set up. Uh, basically, you know, you kind of see two sides of it. There's kind of an alarmist twist. Alarmist. 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 Right? And see, starting off the conversation by doing that, by saying that people that are concerned are alarmists. You know, puts people off and then makes everybody who don't know any better, oh, you're alarmist. That's your instant reaction because you're supposed to be able to trust people like this from Woods Hole. Neither one of these two told the truth for the entire video, not for her one second. They manipulated and lied, and that's why we're here tonight. It's so wrong. Because radioactivity can be very dangerous. It causes cancer, and we should be concerned at levels uh, that have been seen on land, say, in Japan, and initially after the accident. But then they get down to lower levels further away you get from the accident, the further three years later we get. Right, that's pretty slick, the further you get away from the accident, the three years later. So first because of the distance, and then three years later it throws it in there on top of that. And like you've seen in the video today where he equates the, the 137 coming out of Fukushima, when it gets like a thousand miles off the coastline, it turns to potassium 40, right? which you're allowed 7,000 becquels in your water because it's normal radiation. If you drink it, you off-gas those 7,000 becquels up. Insignificant, that has no right to be in this conversation, that everything on this planet. So if you have paint and you put paint on, a, on an object, whatever the becquels of the paint you're putting on, the, what the object equalizes. It can only contain so much potassium-40, but that, that's irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant. It's got nothing to do with E equal MC squared. So it's extraordinarily deceitful to do that. And so... We had an accident in 2011. See, this is Ken again, right? Iodine actually, 131, was one of the primary concerns because of thyroid cancer. 
it's decayed. It has an eight-day half-life. It's decayed. It only has an eight-day half-life times ten. But you can't have iodine-131 without iodine-129. And then you had to kelp off California single bed with 40 million uh, becquerels per second every second of iodine-131. And that's 10 million becquerels of iodine-129. So that's never going away. That can't go away. And then we have all the numbers of the iodine all around California where it was 181 times higher in the, in the rainwater and the drinking water. And then you have Korea where they closed 130 schools for 10 times less and wouldn't let the kids go out because uh, it was radioactive fallout. you got to think about how Russia evacuated 7,500 communities because they did the right ethical and moral thing. They didn't try to make deceive people and let them live there. I mean, Fallujah has so much. Uh, uranium-238 into it, 80% of the children are born with no eyes, no nose, no mouth. And that's why people like Jay are trying to hide. That's why people like Ken spend a lot of time hiding. Like, neither one of these are nuclear physicists. Both of these, I mean, is there a shortage of nuclear physicists out there? Is that what's going on? Is that why we always got to put up with people like this? Who have no right to be out there talking about it. People say, Danny, you're, you know, you got no right to be out there talking about it. You know, find the mistakes I'm making. I I don't uh, say I can make no mistakes. I'm just saying that out of everything I'm doing, that's only one-tenth of one percent I might make mistakes. These guys are endless, the entire video. It's outrageous lies. It's absolute, unimaginable manipulation. Hi, Zoe, are you okay? So iodine-131, you can't have, the reactors don't run on iodine. They run on uranium plutonium. Yeah, and iodine just doesn't come over here and uranium plutonium stays over there. Cesium-137 can't exist without 30 times more strontium. 30 times. 30 times. We're talking about massive numbers they talk about for cesium. And then you have to uh, get your calculator because they won't tell you how many numbers that actually is. They won't tell you that each reactor used to have a million gallons a minute. And that no matter how much water runs over those hot coriums or pieces of it or the rods that blew up the 122,000 rods in each pond each fuel pool that boils off all the time and releases radioactive uh, radiation into the environment those pools are burning off all the time they, they boil all the time they got to add water that all the time Where's, where do you think they're putting that they're releasing that into your environment all of these isotopes are supposed to be in the sarcophagus till the end of time. That's what the licensing agreement says. And they dump it in the ocean in barrels constantly. And then they roll out people that are not nuclear scientists, but are lobbyists of the worst kind that are selling everybody out and that are in positions of influence. And so I have huge concerns with someone like Jay at the University of Victoria in British Columbia, Canada, holding on to his job. That's a huge concern for me. Because he's manipulating and he's maniacal in his amount of lies. We'll just keep going down the road. Saying iodine-131 only has a half-life of eight days is the craziest thing you can imagine coming out of somebody who's supposed to have an education, and supposed to have some morals and ethics. And let me just keep going here. Because that's so disappointing to me. Uh, so now we got to run over to... He's skipping gallons for Beckles. Uh, this is kind of interesting. I'll close down that Windows. Where's that Windows? To? Hello, Windows. There we go. But see... So, Jay, based on what we know, I mean, what would you say to people who are concerned about this? Not only concerned about our health, but concerned talking. about the environment, the ocean, marine life. I mean, when, when right? you talk to people Serious about question. concern, how do you answer these questions? Yes, Jay, how do you do that, man? I'm going to play that in a bit. But he's actually trained about uh, phytoplankton. So he understands that if, you know, one isotope, a, uh, a long-lasting isotope that he claims can be salutable, I'll get to that, these isotopes are, are going to last for, like, uranium, 4.5 billion years times 10, 45 billion years. Uh, because they keep 
going down to another radioactive isotope, another radioactive isotope, and that's what the half-life means. They change to another radioactive isotope. So half-life is the biggest lie out there because it's times 10. It's the biggest manipulating thing out there. That's how they marginalize it right away. And that... Let me keep going. Well, I think it is a question of, this is first of risk and, and what the level of risk associated with these radionuclides in the marine environment um, and the health of... Well, the radionuclides, you know, they'll kill 75 million to 100 million of the phytoplankton with just a couple of pulses because they're putting out so much energy because they went through the chain reaction, right? And because they were atomized and everything else. And that doesn't stop doing that. You can take that isotope, if you could, out of the cup, fill it up again with another 75 million or 100 million phytoplanktons and drop the isotope back in there and you can kill them. And take it out and do that all day till you kill almost all of them. But, so when you're releasing it so much into the environment where it snows down on the ocean, and as that goes all the way down through the ocean in a big snowstorm, all of it is putting out energy, every bit of it. And so all the phytoplankton and all the other... Now, it's not just 75 to 100 million phytoplankton in that cup. I mean, there's that much there, but there's all these other creatures there too. But they're the very foundation of the planet. They make the oxygen. And they feed during the very beginning of the food chain. And so without them, everything else has to fail. But when you radiate everything there and you kill everything there, including the oxygen, there's nothing left behind. That's the plume. That's why the ocean is broken, talking about 3,000 miles with nothing behind it, that they came through for 28 days where there was no birds. Can you imagine that? All my life on the ocean, no matter where I looked, there was hundreds of birds diving somewhere, feeding on something. It's, it was always like that. It's always been like that. And now all of a sudden you got 3,000 miles. That woke me up in a hurry. And so as I looked down that hole, I realized... It's the most frightening thing possible because all that radiation keep falling out of the sky. Any kind of ocean that could recover in certain spots keeps getting buried. But all this stuff goes down and lands on the ocean floor. And where the cold water brings up the nutrients normally, now it's bringing up radioactive material. Because that, that radioacts, that, that beca- everything on the ocean floor becomes radioactive because there's so many snowstorms landing on the ocean. And yeah, some of it gets carried around because of the different salinity of the oceans and the different the different different speeds of the ocean for the different depths and the way they intermingle and everything else is is complicated. But I mean, there's so many peer review studies out there, it's endless, and they don't mention nothing on the go over to Ken's site and go over to Woods Hall and uh, we'll tell you nothing. And it gets me even more creepier than all of this put together. Uh, let me keep going. The marine environment and by extension the health uh, of the public and trying to put the the recent perspective is is difficult because um i think in, in my experience and perhaps ken has found this as as well is that the perception of risk um, when it comes to radiation in the environment, so in the environment tends to be out of step with with what some of the actual risks are um it is important to to, to point out that the the situation in Fukushima itself, you don't say. And, and at the reactor sites, is very, um, it, it's a serious situation. And and uh, as Ken pointed out, monitoring what's going on in the North Pacific is Sorry. one uh, of the uh, very useful uh, tools that we have to try and determine what the the impact of, and uh, and of the disaster will be. And uh, going forward, if if conditions change there, I do point out to the public that um, monitoring. If conditions change. You had three melted reactors, you never opened your mouth. The three of them blew up and all these pools melted down, you never opened your mouth, you don't mention it, you don't bring it up once. It really so much material that you keep fending, you don't know nothing, but yet you're an expert, but you don't know nothing, yet you're an expert. And you're and when you open your mouth, it's always a lie and a manipulation and, and deception. And you equate, well, I'm going to keep going is here. Is the best way to determine when the risks just appear to, to rise to a level where um, they should be front and center in people's uh, minds. Yeah, you'll tell and, us, right, and Jay? Life. You'll get and right on that, will you? Know, yeah. Last time we did this show, our guest said that about 800 tons of toxic material were so pouring the into the Pacific Ocean every day. Do we have an update on that, Jay? 
the, the volume of, of, of water that's being uh, delivered to the ocean. Right. Or, or in terms of she the said right. amount of radioactivity. that She says right. Or uh, the, the amount of radioactivity that's been released. The amount of toxic and radioactivity material that she tries released. to confirm it, but she agrees. Well, at, at this point, um, the most recent numbers I have in front of me, and perhaps um, uh, Ken can provide some insight here too, is that um, there's been on the order of um, um, 80 um, petabecquerels of, of cesium-137, um, for example. Okay, 80 petabecquerels. Well, that would mean how much of uranium becquerels and how much of Plutonium becquerels and how much uranium 234 and 235, I should say, of becquerels each. And so, what about all their daughters? What about all that strontium that goes with cesium? If there's a, if there's that much 90 petabecquerels, there has to be 30 times that of strontium 90, which got a hell of a long life. But you can't have any of it with the uranium plutonium. They're not just going to travel separate, so why are you talking about the one thing only? Why do you keep... But you go and you, you mention a few other things. We'll get to that. Well, that's been released to the environment. Um, a petabecquerel is, is, a, is a very large right, number. Right, so it was 10, a bait and switch. To 15. She was talking about all the water that's running out onto the reactor, and he jumps over to this one, right? And that was based on releases from the aerosols. Now, he, he's, he's equating that with what went into the ocean, but that's not what we were talking about originally, and he jumped it. And let's keep going. Um, Becquerels, which is a, a measure of how many atoms that are radioactive. Right. And so the New York Times reported 600 tons a day that was being flushed out into the ocean from underneath because they're sitting. The, the site is built up on a 100 foot of topsoil that was brought in, laid there. They put the reactors on top of this. Three of them. Uh, Three of them blew up. Unit 1, Unit 3, and Unit 4 had detonations. Unit 2 had a, some kind of detonation. Unit 1, 2, and 3 had complete 100% meltdowns. Their, unit 3 was MOX fuel, 2 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. It was one-third the size of the reactors at Fukushima. We're talking about some serious radiation that got blown all over that site. They came in and plowed everything in the there's a river that runs down the hill. That's washing it all out into the ocean. Where did my single go? Did I get kicked off the line? Yakin. Anybody know? That can rhyme and sound like a drone. I just got a big red chummy there on my uh, window. You lost your signal, mister! Better stop and collect your thoughts for two seconds. Let's go back to the video. That's more fun. Hang on, I'll bring up my other window just so I can keep an eye. I was on a good roll that time. It booted me off, but I know Google holds on to the single, so just give me a second, folks. And still clicking away, 27. I better get my button gear. I gotta let the cover. I well, got three thumbs down so far, so I better get busy. I'm expecting more. Let me keep going. Um, this was the only line one. Uh, per second in a certain volume or mass of material. Now, now that stuff is all running out under the plant, and every time it rains, it's washing more isotopes from all the broken pieces that were blown all over the site. And think of these as neutrons and x-rays popping out. Uh, creating these oil isotopes from this MOX fuel alone, not counting the other two reactors that detonated and sprayed hundreds of tons all over that site. And so that way, as the water got in that site, those rods and those pellets and everything fell down into the earth where they're still at. And so it's hell on earth, that site. Remember at Chernobyl, which was much tinier than this by all comparisons, the people that went to work on it were only allowed to soldiers. 600,000 soldiers got medals. And in Fukushima, and they only went on the roof for 15 or 20 seconds originally as they grabbed a piece, threw it over the roof and went home. Never went back on a nuclear waste site again. In Fukushima, they take the homeless off the streets. We should dress Jay up as a homeless guy and put him down on the streets. And see, and uh, we'll cut his tongue off. Just joking. We'll sew it to his lip. And we'll show him there like he sounds like a dummy. And I bet you they'll grab him and bring him in there. He'll get his rads. He'll watch everybody else as their organs are melting that they're dragging in there. The homeless, the victims... Jay hasn't got the balls to go down there and kick a tin can around, I can guarantee you. 
the things that he's doing, and the same with Ken Buesler, what they're doing is the lowest form of human on the planet. You do not get any lower than that, where they try to manipulate, you know, and marginalize the facts to a point where there's, you know, the line is so blurred because they have an education and so they can equate insignificant stuff and try to employ that that's what it actually means. I'm showing you here now. The numbers are very large. Um, and uh, to put them in She asked me about what is going on. He wants to talk about Beckwell's. Towards the, the sort of, Simple uh, question she asked him. Release of, of these radioactive elements that occurred during I'm atmospheric sure testing one. in Next the 19th, uh, pardon me, in the 20th century. Um, so, for example, with respect to cesium-137, which is one of the elements that was released in very large quantities from Fukushima. It's made, the reactors are made of uranium and plutonium, Jay. Say it. Plutonium. 239, 240, 238, 241. This is weaponized. This was milled from nuclear weapons. It was already weaponized and through the chain reaction, which makes it a couple of million times even worse again. But this was milled from the missiles. This was milled, Jay. Ken, you creatures. Yeah, crazy critters. Um, the amount that was actually released um, uh, uh, to the ocean is on the order of 950 petabecquerels. Yeah, that was for cesium 137, but there was 30 times more strontium. You don't mention that number. How come? You don't talk about the uranium 234 and the 235. How come? Reactors don't run on cesium, shithead. You dummy. You mortal idiot. You stupid dummy. You're supposed to represent Canada and you're up there talking about that shit? Why don't you tell people what the real shit is? How hard could that be? It's a big shot education with all the jobs you had, the fact that you worked at Woods Hole and you're pretending you're from one, that you're independent from a university and that Ken is independent from Woods Hole when you both work for the same spot. It's despicable, man. Um, uh, you know, an order of magnitude sort of difference. So, um, those are the sorts of numbers I'll say, that um, 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 I've had um, access, um, access to. He does that the, the whole way through the video, months. right? And Ken, what, it's annoying as all what do the numbers tell you? Some store reports Ken, say 300 tons, some he's say do the same thing. tons. Well, right? Come at, 300 tons, 800 tons coming out of the plant. That's what she said. Coming out of the plant in water, underneath the plant on the bedrock, sweeping out all these isotopes, running over the hot coriums, extraordinarily toxic, unimaginable. Tons isn't really the relevant number as, as Jay tried to get us thinking Of course about it is. Becquerels, the radioactivity from all these constant. x-rays and neutrons from the broken pieces is picking up all those isotopes. Tration. You can have a lot of water, but it's not contaminated to a high degree. It's just a lot of water. Uh... I just see you take a bat and tear the skin right off you. If you had a piece here this big, I couldn't finish the sentence. If you had a piece the size of a banana, I couldn't finish the sentence. Ken? I'm talking to you, Ken, you freaking creature. Your, your days are numbered for being a public speaker. Because we're going to end up having to shame all of ye. Or we're going to have to be like Ukraine where we get the fire hoses out and we take it all back. Some of those wells and those tanks are highly contaminated so uh it depends upon the ice <laughs> the tanks are highly contaminated <laughs> which is true but that's the exact same stuff that went out into the ocean right but that stuff that went out in the ocean ran over the hot coriums on the way down he couldn't pump that out because it went ran over the coriums it was running over all the pieces of the rod all over the site for the next thousand years. It's supposed to be in a sarcophagus till the end of time. You can't even build it. But you, for the last 70 years, you claimed you could. Your license just says you're not supposed to do stuff like that. And you put all of these rods over the nuclear power plant to solve in Japan, where there's a fault line with 1,000 to 5,000 earthquakes a year. So what we're talking about and what uh, Jay was talking about, what we've seen from Data from the Japanese, from the kind of data from the Japanese. <laughs> from the Tepco is lied every day, man. Everybody knows that, right? We're out into the ocean. Our numbers for cesium that are much, you know, a thousand times less, ten thousand times less than what's right? going on. In t 
There was enough release just in the first day. A gram of it, of cesium for instance, which the reactors don't run on, they run on uranium, plutonium, that you won't even hear to mention uranium. Oh, you mentioned uranium, uh, natural uranium in the ocean. You can take a bath in that every day. Every friggin' day. It'll never give you cancer. But if you were to take a piece of uranium the size of this here and drop it in a bathtub and sit in there, you wouldn't get out of it. And you have to put your body on a nuclear waste site. But he always does that where he equates that around. 2011. Hi, sweet Jane. Say it's zero. We were actually one of the first groups to say in 2011 that there's still a leak there. We should be concerned. You were not, man. Everybody was screaming. How much is it leaking? Right? And so this is where they try to give themselves some credibilities. That was four. Let's jump over. And I forgot to put a five. So this one is called six. I got no idea. Uh, claims tanks are the scary. Oh, yeah, right. And so um, it's actually surprising 30 seconds. Summer when they said it's not leaking to the ocean, and they said, well, it's not getting out of the harbor. Well, anyone offshore can detect those isotopes. It is leaking continuously at low levels of cesium compared to the... At low levels of cesium. He's talking about the tanks, right? So it's a total distraction. It's hemorrhaging out under the plant 100 feet down on the bedrock nonstop. You can't do nothing with it. There is no, we got three chain reactions going on there. There's no little black book on this stuff. We've never had this. It's headed down to Argentina. And the isotopes and the radiation that that's creating because of the river underneath it, all this stuff is all over the site because the detonations were felt 25 miles away by AP reporters to concussions. It blew hundreds of tons of radioactive material extraordinarily unbelievable radioactive because it went through the chain reaction it was already in spent pool all over that site so the site has to stay perpetually wet release nothing like the hundred of or 50 to 80 petabecquerels in 2011 he's talking about cesium what about uh, 50 petabecquerels in 2011 of uranium what about the 50 you know of plutonium and what about uh, 50 of uh, 50 petabecquels of iodine-129, Ken? But there's Just other stories, about cesium. too. There's other isotopes. I slipped over, yes. 90 is one that right? uh, actually is in those tanks. It, so now the tanks are a concern. Oh, Jesus, we better be careful because the tanks might tip over. There's a strontium-90, you'll get out. Say what the game is. Something that uh, in the future could be of concern. In other words, we had an accident. So, in the future, could be a concern. So that was a good way of getting everybody distracted away from the actual three melted cores and the constant hemorrhaging. So let's keep going. So we start to be concerned about cesium because it has a 30-year half-life for the 137 isotope. I have to go find the other cesiums that got a, a couple of million year isotope uh, half-lives that are. Uh, you know, that's the way this stuff works. And you can get cesium-137 from Stardust. And you can get cesium-137 from a beach that's indigenous. It's got nothing to do with this conversation, but they put a name like that on it in order to confuse people and manipulate people. And everything we talk about here got nothing to do with background radiation. It's all about nuclear radiation. Background radiation has no uh, meaning in this conversation. You won't find E equals MC squared where he says throwing a banana, throwing some potatoes... Go and take some wax, scrape off your skin, take that background radiation, and then make yourself a little bomb. At that site, they're actually actively removing the cesium from these <laughs> hundreds of uh, tons of water a day. Hey, that's great. Now we can just clean up all the nuclear sites on the planet because they're actively removing all the cesium-137 out of the water, which is ludicrous. It's ludicrous. If they're able to do that, do you think there'd be 450 million billion gallons down there at Hanford? Do you think they would leave that 41 miles of open pit at Hanford if they can wig out some of that stuff? You want to go down and try it? You're welcome to, Ken. You crazy, crazy critter. Crazy nuclear critter. I'd see you go down and work it out, kid. <laughs> I'd see you go down to Japan, down in the Fukushima, with your little video camera, and visit the kids down there where they decontaminated the playground and still a million Beckwells per square meter, Ken. Let's sit there and get some anal cancer. 
You're and just a disgusting person, boy. radioactive decontaminated waters. Disgusting Jones maggots. Quite high, high enough that if even 10 of those tanks were to leak, and we saw one of them leak this summer. If 10 of those tanks were to leak, what, Ken? What, Ken? Is the whole world going to be in trouble, Ken? Do you got any idea what friggin' happened? Do you, uh, does it, does, should, should we all, like, write letters to Ken and say, Ken, I know this is going to come as a friggin' shock, <laughs> but the place is carnage. There was three detonations that blew hundreds of tons of rods all over the fucking site. You moron. I'm sorry. You fucking dummy. Tell to tell everybody that as a distraction, the only concern you got is if something happens to them tanks. Like a sickening. That equals the whole amount that was released two and a half to three years ago. Of strontium-90. Now see, all the cesium that got released, there was 30 times more strontium. 90, right? And so this is the bait and switch that these guys do. So we have other isotopes that may become They're scum. Concerned. So it is an evolving uh, accident Lie. and near Japan and right at the coast of Japan, it's severe enough that they've had to close fisheries. And We're talking about here, working not there, dummy. But again, the further away you get, you asked earlier about right? the behavior. Well, it's dangerous there, but it's not dangerous anywhere else. else. The ocean is yeah, when you get out, like he said in the video I made for you today, where he says, when you get out a thousand miles, like potassium 40. <laughs> right? How do you get from cesium 137 to potassium 40? Right? The biggest fable ever made. It's totally careless. This guy should never have his degree. If we had actual institutions out there were paying attention, that guy should lose his degree immediately. Woods Hole should drop him on his head. And the University of Victoria should do the same with Jay. Their liabilities. They're humiliating Canada, and now they're going to humiliate the university Salty. and Woods Hole. Very they're trying high. to kill Woods Hole, I think. One, it's one or the other. Uh, naturally, it dissolves and moves with the water and as it moves. It does not naturally dissolve, Ken. Cesium 137 doesn't that. Radio man made. I'm yelling now. Radioactive isotopes don't dissolve, they don't just fucking dissolve. That would be the solution if that's what they done. Everybody would be out there, oh, we'll just dissolve them. This is something you're inventing. Moves the concentration like fucking heart attack. So we can sample safely off of... Fruit. What about the uranium? That dissolved too? The plutonium dissolved too? The 30 times more strontium-90, that all dissolves, according to Ken. You know what dissolve means? It kills all the, the phytoplankton in the ocean over a couple of billion years of putting out energy, then it dissolves. It's okay, Zoe. Fukushima right now in the ocean, and it would be even lower levels here on our coast. Mm. It? Yeah, it's high levels by Japan, but it'd be even lower levels over on our coast. Like, poof! That's all you can do with someone like that is haul off and smack it right in the mouth. The open pond. How else could you even look at someone like that as anything less than the, the, the scum of the earth? This is the people, he's, we're supposed to be able to turn to this guy for information. And this is his uh, cliche. There's a lot over there, but there's probably less over here. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. There can't be anybody any stupider. Right? But this is what they're feeding out there. They're, they're, they're not stupid. They're extraordinarily educated. They're doing it on purpose. They're manipulating you on purpose. They're deceiving everybody on purpose. Again, safe is a bit of a loaded word. Uh, yeah, this I'll say. everything we do, but certainly much less risk on our side of the ocean than near those reactors. So it does. Well, Jesus, <laughs> Ken, you're brilliant. We ought to give you the Pulitzer Prize there. There's a lot more radiation over there than there is here. Like, is he trying to be a comedian? Or am I missing something here? Because he's actually using that in the context as don't worry, folks, it's okay over here. There's more over there, so there's less over here, so don't worry. Because there's a lot over there, but there's not as much here. But <laughs> it's just... dissolves as it travels this way. It's it outright light, it though. It gets into the ocean, or it dissolves atmospherically, becomes quickly dissolved. As it comes out of the atmosphere, it quickly dissolves. It's radioactive fallout. It's known as nuclear fallout. It's known as dust. It doesn't dissolve. It doesn't stop putting out energy for the life of the isotope. If it's uranium, it's 4.5 billion years before it changes to its next 
radioactive isotope. If it's any of the isotopes, that's what it does. But the reactors are made of uranium and plutonium. And their byproducts, you know, are many, so many. You, and you got the iodine-129. Every three iodine-131, there's an iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life. And there's a lot of these extraordinary half-lives that we're going to end up having. And that means that, you know, think of dye when you drop something, it starts to decrease in concentration. It's a, it's a streaky process. Yes, it doesn't decrease. It decreases in concentration, but that doesn't lose any power. So as that goes into the phytoplankton and all the other creatures, it's destroying more. It never stops beating. It's beating out all this energy. A becquel is enough energy to flip over a grain of sand in the nuclear terminology, but not in the indigenous background mythologies. If it's following ocean currents, the Kurashio is the main one that burns quickly into the ocean. And, and so streams. that's why it's taken two plus years to get across, but that's a big distance. Hmm. But that's a big distance. Well, isn't that big? You got across in a couple of years. Uh, number eight. Now, these are lobbyists, what we're listening to. These are 100% lobbyists, but they're the, they're the devil's lobbyists, right? Their, their job is to stop you from working out what I'm telling you, to make you never understand the things I'm saying, to deceive you of even the concept that this exists. That's their whole job, and they go out looking for the most vulnerable. And Jay, what are your thoughts on fish? Some of the, the most relevant measurements, I think, come from uh, an article that was published by, by Nick Fisher, in which Ken uh, was, a, was a co-author, and talking about Pacific bluefin. Right, so now he's gone back to Ken's site. Oh, hey, you know, she asked him a question. Well, there was a good article over there on Ken's site. Get your ass on over there. Where we'll just take your money, slap you up the side of the head. I'll okay. get to that. Now, the, the concentrations of Fukushima-derived radionuclides, um, and the, the focus there was largely on the cesium isotopes, suggested that there is additional exposure to radiation to human consumers, and those eating typical North American diets um, could expect exposures to, to increase, but that uh, on the order of, of 500-fold more exposure to radiation from human consumers of bluefin tuna would be coming from the naturally occurring um, radionuclide polonium-210. Um, polonium-210. Now, that's a much lower than any background radiation of bananas or potatoes. And so he's equating that with an increase. So is there an increase of this stuff? Now, because you got to realize that the people that he's listened to him, this is the first time they heard the words plutonium, but he says polonium. Right, which is one, you know, it's in the same categories, but it's not, of course, because they sound alike. But we know that the reactors are made of weaponized uh, military nuclear weapons that were milled down. They took the plutonium and milled it down even more. And so he puts out that word, and so when people looks it up, they say, oh, that's not very bad. It's less than background radiation of a banana, um, which, you know, don't get me started. The plutonium-238, 239, 240, and 241 is what's coming at it. And that's what he should be talking about, not the polonium, but the plutonium. Right? See how it easy is to get confused on that? And by doing that, people don't understand that this got 24,000-year hardcore, I'll kill your ass now, life. And extraordinarily toxic to the ocean. And the isotopes will, will destroy hundreds of millions of phytoplankton every minute. It just floats around destroying phytoplankton at hundreds of millions a minute forever and ever, you know, for 24,000 years in the ocean. And he specializes in that stuff, so he knows this is what it does to the ocean. He knows those snowfalls that were sustained for months from radioactive fallout of uranium, plutonium, the strontium, and the cesiums, that even if it did fall down towards the ocean floor, it got brought back up with the cold water that normally came up with nutrients to feed the phytoplankton at the surface, which is the very chain of life of this planet. Not only because it produces 50% of the oxygen on the planet, but because it's the food chain itself for the ocean. The very beginning of it. You attack that, you kill everything else. Nothing can survive it. But as those plumes, because it's hemorrhaging so much that two of them skipped over so effectively, but those big plumes from all of those isotopes getting washed out all through Japan. Every time it rains and every time it snows, it all gets washed out into the ocean again. It gets liberated. Isotopes are being picked up in 
weather in broad out. The ocean is radioactive on a large scale, unimaginable scale because of Fukushima. That's not going to stop anytime soon. That's burning away uh, in a chain reaction that we've never seen unhinged at a site where it's so toxic that a Dixie cup of it will kill everything on the planet. It'll kill everything in a restaurant in an hour. 200 people. Every hour, non-stop, for billions of years. But the stuff he's trying to equate it with has got nothing to do with this, see? That, that's, that's been in the ocean uh, since there's, there's been an ocean, more or less. So polonium doesn't have nothing to do because it's, it's just indigenous. You can take a bath in that every day. But you take a bath in plutonium, 239, 240, 241, etc., it'll kill you. You don't get out of it. You know, these concentrations of 7,000 beckles in, in your drinking water, that should never, ever be said by somebody talking about nuclear stuff because it's irrelevant. You drink 7,000 beckles, you off-gas 7,000 beckles that are insignificant, that are part of your DNA, literally. Everything on this planet is acclimated to that. And so um, I think, again, it's about putting the risk in perspective. Um, it I is, think there are, Personally, there are a lot is. of uh, other reasons not to eat uh, bluefin tuna that I would put closer to the top of my list um, rather than um, Fukushima radio, radionuclides. Um, that, that, that fishery isn't doing very well, for example. So the fishery's not doing good, so it's okay to eat it. It's okay to eat poison because you might... Uh, well, why don't we get rid of GMO, Jay, your creature? GMO got no nutrition in it. They engineered it all out. 85 cents of the corner shops, or 100% of the corner shops, and 85% of the supermarkets are genetically modified foods. They engineered glossophates and formaldehydes into it, which are carcinogens and toxic, stop you from uptaking nutrients. Not that it matters, because they engineered it all out. So if you happen to eat some organic, you won't even be able to uptake that. They, 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 they couldn't engineer nutrition into the food. They, the only way you could do it was engineer it all out, all the potassium, all the magnesium, all the calcium, all the iron, all the cobalt. I think you're a fucking scum boy. I really do. I think you're the lowest form of life. It's unimaginable someone like you works at the University of British Columbia as a professor. It's the most unimaginable, unethical thing imaginable. You lied. I can't imagine how many lies you're after telling but you're so smooth at this tonight, it's incredible that you're willing to go out and stab everybody in the back. Even your own family, even your own brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles, even your own children, even your own spouse. You're willing to go out and lie, and lie to them, I'm sure. Because you're, you wouldn't want to tell them what you're doing. You don't want to tell them how much of a liar, manipulator, and an actual deceitful fucker you really truly are. Because you're... By what you're doing here tonight, that proves you're a monster. You're a psychological, pathological fucking lawyer. There's zero good about you. I can't find one thing in that entire interview where you told the truth. You're a patholog pathological, maniacal fucking lawyer. A very dangerous one. Now this is even scarier because of the Woods Hole what we're learning here tonight. Ken, I know you have to leave us in about five minutes. Why don't you talk a little bit about the analyzing that you've been doing at the Fukushima plant since 2011? Well, all of our work to date has been funded by private foundations, like we said. We're not uh, supported by the government to go over to Japan and sample. Plutonium water uh, boards. But with this concern on the U.S. Yeah, uh, West Coast, Canadian Coast okay, here we go. line, we've started a crowd-funded campaign, uh, Our Radioactive Ocean, so he wants people to send them, and Mama Knox put a, a comment on the last video. By the way, Mama Knox, that was marked spam. I had to un, unspam it. And um, they want a crowdsource where you send them stuff and they pay you, or you pay them, and they tell you, but they don't tell everybody else. That's literally what's going on. But also that... You can't trust him, right? You're going to send them samples that are high rated, and they're going to send you send you back the information. No, nope. they're just going to make a whole bunch of money for doing nothing. They're not even going to check it. They're just going to sit there and mark down numbers. They're not even going to fucking try. You can hear them laughing anyway. Yeah, you can send it to my lab like you couldn't even contain yourself. And the thought was, we have samples from individuals who keep asking us, can we make some analyses for the cesium isotope? Because we're supposed to trust others, you. I'm sure want to know what levels are near their beaches, near their waters, 
And so we've opened up. And so people that put their faith in him now, he's going to stab them to death. Site just two days ago, where people can propose new locations to sample, participate in reaching fundraising goals, and then money, money. Send them a kit to collect. You know, if I was ever going to go asking for money, you fucking know I asked you for money because you'd be laughing for a full hour. Because you have no idea how low I would stoop. You have no idea what I would do. But I don't. These guys don't stop. I would be out there doing something cool. Saying, hey, we're going to do something freaking cool here. These guys, hey, you know, you send me the money. Send us the stuff, we'll check it. We'll get back to you. But all they do is lie in their interviews. Every friggin' one of them, non-stop. It's uh, the water in return to us, and we would then process these and put those data online. Mm. Uh, it's not a simple process. It's relatively easy to collect, but it takes five gallons of water, quite a, a big volume, to measure the levels that are there already. And what we're trying... Yeah, they had uh, 40 million Beckwells, remember? I only like to see them measure that one. 40 million Beckwells... Of iodine 131, 10 million beckles of those were iodine 129, 15 million year half life in California. You don't need no fucking five gallon bucket of that shit, I can assure you. Fuck you up. You see, it is the addition of the 134 cesium, the uh, abundant isotope from Fukushima. The abundant isotope from Fukushima, from the nuclear reaction. Say it, Ken, you dummy. But has a two year half life. So it's only around from a more recent source. It's a fingerprint in a way to say, is that water at all showing signs of the arrival of the plume from right. isotopes? But yeah, you got to send me, you got to send me your money and send me your buckets of shit for me to check. And uh, it's over two years has gone by. So why is he even talking about that? You know what I'm saying? Uranium's got a half-life of 4.5 billion years. Plutonium's got a half-life of 24,000 years. Why not look for that stuff? Why not look for the iodine-129? With a 15 million year half-life, why not look for those isotopes? They can't travel one without the other, so why not look for the sure shot? If you truly want to do what you're going to do for the nuclear, man-made, radioactive isotopes, not the indigenous... Tent. Okay, here we go. And he got his own lab. Now this is fun. He took your petonio for a walk and he got off the leash. Whenever <laughs> uh, we have an, uh, a listener who wrote an email. Is it safe to eat seafood as a tourist in Japan? Actually, that's a very good question because I guess uh, I think what people don't realize it's sort of like I think of oyster beds here. Some areas are safe. Safe and some aren't. No, it's not like an oyster bed where some beds are safe and some is not. You retarded monkey, Ken. You're talking about red tide come in and you can't take the oysters for a little while because they're bivalves and so they go in and out through the same a hole, right? Or holes and so they get contaminated. Well, we're talking about radiation. You don't get rid of it. So you can't equate that with red tide that everybody's familiar with would show up for a month, a year or something like that and then you're not allowed to pick seafood out of those areas with shellfish anyway because of the red tide because it's toxic to humans. We're talking about radiation. You can't equate it that way. If radiation goes and settles there, it's bad till the end of time. With red tide, it's okay two weeks later. But that's what I mean about Ken, right? He just uses stuff like that endlessly it's unbelievable how much you use like that. Tens of thousands of measurements in seafood as it's brought to shore. They've closed the areas where they exceed the threshold in Japan for commercial fishing. And so those fish simply don't get to market when they exceed the level. And their level is very stringent. It's actually more <coughs> stringent than ours for the radionuclides cesium in seafood. What about the uranium? How stringent is that one? How about the, the plutonium? How stringent is that one? You know what? I can't even take it tonight. i got to have a cigarette. Second time in 90, 90 days. or 90, 90 days. 85, 86 days. If you wonder what I'm smoking, I'm smoking uh, Player's True Plane. And that's got no chemicals. And it's got no filters. And filters makes the particles smaller. 
And most cigarettes got 4,000 chemicals in it because the EPA grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals. So the four, you can use, legally use those 4,000 chemicals, right? Nobody knows why they do that. Probably got nothing to do with all the cancer. They've been trying for 40 years academic studies to prove nicotine gives you cancer. I go after the 4,000 trace chemicals they're putting in there. Jay probably knows a lot about that. Ken probably knows a lot about that stuff. They've got shares in that company. Wherever the company is, they're sending, selling those 4,000 chemicals to the cigarette companies. Well, these don't have chemicals. These are natural tobacco, apparently. And they got no filters. So the filters will make the particles so small they get through the liners of your lungs. Or they do some serious damage. But I'm so... I've been at this all day. Six o'clock this morning. Right up... I had like 20 minutes before I came on here. I finally cut all of these pieces. And I stopped. Had a cup of tea. And then I sat uh, sat here in front of the camera. And I've been streaming since. So we're not getting those seafood in our markets. And when I go to Japan, I eat the seafood because I know they've... T- so when he goes to Japan, he eats the seafood. Unbelievable lobbyists. Tested. Mm-hmm. What's getting on the market is safe to eat in Japan. So he eats the food in Japan because he thinks it's safe to eat. Well, you can't find uranium in your fucking seafood, can you, dummy? You can't find uranium or plutonium in your seafood. Particularly Japanese. Try catching your catching octopus before you eat them. Eat them live down there, right? They're crazy. They're a disgusting uh, society anyway. They got vending machines down there where they sell little girls used panties. Ken's, Ken's probably a big favor of that one, I bet you. He's twisted. Hey, well, what about other kinds of food? I, I was I recently bought some nori rolls from Japan. They were organic, and I, there was a huge sticker on the package I won't smoke that said very radiation much. tested, radiation I can't smoke free. Much. Well, my under- you hear that understanding, one? and I've seen some of the equipment, is Watch that this. everything coming out of the regions close by, Fukushima in particular, the prefixture, the this state is- type system, is uh, tested all of the food supplies. So this is rice, this is nori, this is the seafood. And so they're going one by one, every bag of rice is going through some quite elaborate, expensive testing going on. (laughs) So every bag of rice is going through the lab, every single one. Like you told so many lies, right? You just can't help yourself at this stage. Oh, that's too good. It's been a rough day. I don't smoke much, so. There's no nicotine that's going to hurt you. It's all about the 4,000 chemicals in the cigarette and the filter in the end of it. To determine what the levels are in those. And again, if they exceed that, they have a protocol to shut down that particular source. So, uh, you Why know, don't I go talk to the farmer with all the cows? <laughs> or the farmers down there where the pigs are going in and kicking open their doors and eating all their salt and sugar? The wild pigs, domesticated ones. Hang on, one more. So today we are talking about what the science and the facts actually tell us. Dr. J.T. Cullen is Associate Professor in the School of Earth and Ocean Sciences at the University of Victoria in BC, Canada. And Ken Bissler is a Senior Scientist in Marine Chemistry and Geochemistry at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. And they've got a website, rradioactiveocean.org which is asking citizens to get involved to help them fund testing because it's not being done at this, at this. So these clowns are going to go testing. These people are actually going to go testing. You tell them cats are alive. So these clowns ain't going to go testing. Are going to go testing. Would you trust these people after what you learned tonight? Could you trust these people if they're on your same street? I couldn't. Or if they were in my community, I still couldn't trust them. These are murderers. I mean, what they're doing here tonight, they're murdering. That's an hour and three minutes. Okay, I'll find one more clip. I'll find a short one, and then we'll call it a night. I didn't realize we were this far down the road. Uh, yes. Uh, let me see. Oh, my favorite one here. This is just like a 30-second clip before we call it a night. I didn't realize it was just late into the show, folks. Here we go. This one is 53 seconds. And I, I think the important thing to point out is that uh, the, the radioactive isotopes that have been discovered at that site are radioisotopes that come from uh, naturally occurring radioactive minerals. Uh, How the fuck would you know that, Jay? How could you possibly 
come out and say that. They don't even friggin' know. They try to blame it on utensils. Listen, that that's there on the beach because the rain washes it out of the community. That whole community, California, got hammered. All the plumes, all the models. Anybody's not familiar with this? Go look at my uh, short Thunderfoot video I put out a couple of days ago. I used all the models in that. Or the one yesterday, or the day, rather, that I put out about these guys. I put lots of models in that. Go over to E&E News. Their site is full of it. And type in uh, models, or type in study, or type in report, or type in plume. And then go through those lists and educate yourself. And you'll realize that if you're related to Ken or you're related to Jay, the moral and ethical thing to do is check them into a mental institution, get a drip in their arm, don't ever let them the fuck out of there again. That's the moral and ethical thing to do. And, you know, too bad we don't allow um, good old whippings here in Canada or hangings in this country anymore because if there's ever two people that deserve to be prosecuted and publicly flogged and then hung it's these two creatures that are manipulating the most vulnerable of society by getting out into the media on purpose and spreading as much disinformation i had at least another nine clips there to go through that i can't get through but it's that's an incredible the entire the link is below the entire video is 100 percent lies and manipulations and misrepresentations and this is shocking that these people are put up on a pedestal when they're the most harmful, most vicious things you can imagine. The most untrustworthy words can never come out of a mouth as much as they did out of theirs. And the fact that Jay Cullen uh, is a professor at a university in British Columbia is a black eye on all of Canada, you know, 100%. The students that are there need to be rescued and put through re-education because everything he taught them has hurt them for the rest of their lives. Everything he touches hurts those things for the rest of their lives. There's nothing go it'll come out of his mouth ever. Particularly in that interview, he's he's very comfortable with lying and manipulating, deceiving. It's it's really heartbreaking to see this kind of uh, opposition. This is what they got to resort to. And so we're an hour and seven minutes. That's too long. I'll have to come in after and read everybody's comments. I seen the comments going there earlier, folks. You folks are unbelievably cool. We'll be back tomorrow night, back on schedule. And that's the best we can do. Hour and seven minutes. I'm not going to hold you any longer. Have a nice night, folks. We'll kick their asses again tomorrow night. We'll probably even finish this one off. Take care.